violence is just a way of life now. We've been taught that. We've been um, uh, programmed that violence is just a way of life. So when we see really violent acts, oh, oh that's too bad. But, you know, honey, what's on Channel 7? Or what movie are we going to rent tonight? You know, uh, that's, that's what it's come to. And it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. There is no reason that any, any of this has to occur at all. It really doesn't. And, it's, and, it is, and it, a lot of it is the responsibility of the people. Because if the producers and Hollywood are going to make movies like this, and we're going to go and buy the tickets, well, they're going to be motivated for the buck to continue to make these kind of movies. Where if they spend $20 million and nobody buys a ticket, they won't be making those kind of movies. So it comes back to people taking personal responsibility for what they think, what they want to believe, and what it is that they want to create. Do the Andromedans really feel that we'll be able to reach that window? Right now it's undecided. And that's the scary part. They don't know. What would help push it forward? <sighs> I don't know. I, I really don't know. Ask. Except for just, you know, start listening to, to people that are talking start really paying attention to what's going on. Um, you know, my grandfather used to have a saying, believe nothing that you hear in half of what you see. You know, uh, I wouldn't believe a thing that comes out of Washington, D.C. In fact, it's my own personal belief that this, this next election um, that's coming up next year in November, that every American should march on Washington, D.C. and should fire every single person that's there. They have run this country into the ground. They have totally sold us out to the, to the United Nations um, for a buck, you know, for the debt. And, you know, even the monetary system, it's just a belief system. We could change that tomorrow if we wanted to. I mean, we're so intelligent. We could create something different, you know, but we're believer. Oh, we've got to have this money. Do you know that we're the only race, the only race in our galaxy where people starve, that people are homeless? Um, I mean, it's just, it's such bull. It, it doesn't have to be like this. If you're alive and you're on a planet and other civilizations, even the draconian races, they take care of their own. They don't sell out each other like we do here. They don't throw somebody in the street because they don't have a, a paper, which is really what it is. You know, and the only value on it is what we believe it is. They just don't have that. You know, they don't let children starve. They don't feed grain to cattle that feed 20% of the population and let other, the other 25% that need the grain starve. They, it's unconscionable. They would never even think to do that. But we do it here. Four bucks. for money. for power. That's part of that condition process that's been going on 5,700 years. That's part of it. But the responsibility is that there are people that know what's going on and they play the game anyway. They don't have the courage to say, look, folks, let's deal with the realities here. You know, we don't have a guy that's strong enough in, in office as president to stand up and say, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we've really been sold out. That there are forces within our government, like what Kennedy tried to do, that just flat out want to destroy the United States because we're too good, because we have too much. Instead of raising the consciousness and, 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 the, and the life, um, everyday life, um, What's the word I'm looking for? A standard of living. Of the, with, of, instead of raising the standard of living that we have um, globally. To, globally, they would rather just destroy the United States, or destroy our, 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 our standard of living so that we're comparable to everybody else. So now everywhere is a third world nation. And that's exactly what they're doing. And they're doing it for power, for greed. We're selling out our own, and it's just... Something's got to be done. Could you describe the human military bases on the dark side of the moon, Mars, and the Mars probes as related to you by the Andromedans, and how the Alpha Draconians fit into this scenario? The Mars probes, the Russian and the US one, they're gone. They were destroyed. They're history. There's no secret here about, well, it, it's taking pictures privately. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter whether you believe that or not, it's history. Okay, uh, March of 89, the Russians took pictures, Mars was invaded, 
we had a human colony there of 300,000, so I'm told. Uh, one Adam was underground, Eve. one was above ground, Adam and Eve. They are conquered, they're being taken over. The human beings that are from Earth that volunteered or were kidnapped to go there are in, are in deep trouble. Many of them have already been eaten, some of them have already been killed. There is nothing we can do here as a race to help them. So that, that was, Mars was conquered by the Alpha Druid Conquest? That's right. They came in, there's 100,000 of them there. They have approximately 2,111 ship scout craft there. They're in an area underground that is 64 square miles, known on Mars as the area of Tempe Terra. That's where their base is. Now, we... It's an ancient base that they had. Uh, it's over a million years old. And the last time it was, it was um, in full bloom was 317,000 years ago. Now, if we begin to train all our telescopes on that, are we going to be able to see activity going on there? I suppose that we would. I, I have a feeling that they already are seeing incredible amounts of activity, but they're not allowed to say it. They're just not allowed to say it. Nor, who's, who's going to want to jeopardize going to jail, being ridiculed, being fired, giving up everything they have to come up and say, well, I'm, a, I'm an astronomer, and I was looking at Mars, and I saw alien craft, and I know there's a base there, and it's being conquered by reptilian aliens. Who's going to have the guts to come up and say it? Somebody's Nobody in the power to. elite. Nobody wants to blow their mortgage. But somebody's going to have to, right? So, well, yes, but eventually. it's going to be too late by the time they do it. Is that what you're thinking? Yes. And, so, and, and that's exactly what the Andromedans are thinking. You see, you know, there are people probably saying, well, God, why don't they just come down and save us? There's a lot to that. Number one, if we're rescued, we don't permanently evolve ourselves. Number two, we won't take responsibility. If something goes wrong, we can always blame it on them. Number three, it doesn't just change our reality, it changes their reality as well. Number four, the Andromedans and most of the other benevolent races, they don't want to have to come down here and babysit. Us, that's not their job. It's not their job at all. Now, in the way you told me... That and number four, and, and I'm sorry, and, and number five, let me just add this. Look at how we've treated our Earth. Look at how we've trashed it ourselves. You know, they're like, why should we come down here and help you when you don't want to even help yourself? Or even make the effort? You know, uh, the cleaning up the planet, we're giving to government bureaucracies. Well, well, here's $3 billion here. There's $10 billion there. Here's the super fund to clean up toxic waste, $20 billion. $20 billion, and, and the place is getting worse. You know, that's not the problem. The problem is on an individual level, on an individual basis. Just don't create plutonium anymore. Just don't create styrofoam anymore. Just tell the industries, the corporations, because we're the ones who control it. We're the ones buying the products. We won't buy it unless you fix it. End of story. Period. We need to change it. It's our planet. We are the bulk of humanity. It isn't the corporations, it isn't the Fortune 500, it isn't the Committee for 300, and it isn't the Trilateral. We could fire all of them if we had to. Period. But it, it's, it's, it's coming together and it's doing something about it. And it's going to have to be grassroots and people are going to have to start doing it soon. Are these leaders going to, if we do raise up and do a grassroots uprising, when they ordered the military to quell that like they do at Kent State or any other political demonstration? They probably will try. They probably will try. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But you know what? Let's take, a, let's take an example of the American Revolutionary War. Four percent of the population of the colonies actually rose up and fought the British. Only four percent. The rest stayed home, stayed in the pubs, drinking ale, doing whatever, and waited to see who would end the war, to see who would win. And then when we won, everybody wanted to take credit for it. But it was really only 4%. Those heroes. And those 4% changed the face of the world. Well, America, 210, 12 years, whatever it is now, we're, we're right back at the same place where we're being called to do exactly the same thing. But the paradox here, Alex, would be then that if we begin to war against ourselves, that's going to exactly fuel the whole fire that's going on. Maybe for a brief time it would, until one side surrendered or saw the light. 
You know? Do you know much about?